Just set your limits the palaces.com, the home of festive bing. Ho, ho, ho. It's 6 39. <laughs> Already. Yeah. This is Breakfast with Steve Dinan on your TV and on your radio right across the UK. So, shall we take a look at today's front pages? The Daily Mail, or the Mail on Sunday, leads with concerns raised by ministers that Nick Clegg could be getting tips about government plans to regulate Facebook. Uh, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, reveals to the Sunday Telegraph that Russia could be planning cyber attacks on British interests. And then that's the Sunday Mail there, leading with their campaign to ban single-use wet wipe cloths that are heavily toxic to the environment. The Sunday Times claims that after its investigation into the wealthy donors who are supposedly advising uh, the PM on particular government action. The Independent runs comments made by the Ukrainian president that condemn Europe's appeasement of Putin throughout this crisis. Yeah. Finally, the Daily Star Sunday looks at the important news that a violent ghost is haunting the home of 80s star Toya Wilcox. I don't know if it's true or not, they've just done it for that headline. Yeah, they're it's exactly. A mystery. It's a mystery. Of course they have, <laughs> yes. They yeah. often do that, don't they? Love so we it. go through the papers now. Uh, let's start some of the major stories in the papers. We have with us broadcaster Pete Price and journalist Ella Whelan. And a very good morning. Good morning. morning. So we're kicking off with you, Ella, aren't we? And uh, you've been looking at the latest things that are being said about the Ukraine. Yes, all over the um, front pages, as you might expect. Um, even though we had a kind of, throughout the week, there was this sort of anti-climax where all the live streams in Kiev produced nothing and all these sort of D-days of 2 a.m., 3 a.m. didn't come about with any sign of um, Russian action. There is an ongoing war of words, particularly from the UK, it seems, um, very dramatic language coming out of Boris Johnson talks uh, the speech that he gave of uh, describing the potential for a generation of bloodshed and misery and um, we've got the you from the ukraine Vladimir zelensky coming out and demanding that the west um imposes sanctions now he's saying what are you waiting for so there's a real ramping up um but the question is what what you know damage will this have in relation to provoking um russian action there's a really great example on the front page of the sunday telegraph of that story about the potential for cyber attacks just to show you what can happen when you have this war of words so the top line is that pretty patel is saying there could be russian um uh, messing around with uh, cyber attacks and everyone should kind of batten down the hatches and impose um preemptive measures but actually if you run down that column the front page of the sunday telegraph it quotes lindy cameron who's head of gchq the national cyber security center who specifically says there is currently no evidence of the UK being specifically targeted, but just in case. So there right. is there is a real problem, I think, here with um, head, not just headlines in the media, but also I think cabinet ministers trying to use this um, very serious international conflict as some kind of a stage for grandstanding, which is only going to be if you really do think Putin is a very you know specific danger, which you know is not to be sniffed at. Is only going to poke the bear. I think that's the real problem. Yeah, poking the bear, that's a good turn of phrase. I think that, that's the concern from a lot of people. Um, Pete, to the Sunday Mirror, uh, looking at oh, WhatsApp and the Home Office. Yeah, it's 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 basically uh, racist slurs are being made by the staff of the firm. They're getting paid millions uh, who are looking after uh, the migrants and the detention centres. And one of those slurs was uh, they're joking about the channel ordeal. What I can't understand is, we're living in a world now which is very PC. How many more people are going to be hurt by verbal slurs before people start to realise? Think before you open your stupid mouth yeah. and don't put it down in writing, especially on WhatsApp. These are getting paid money. Please look after these people, whether you are a fan or not a fan of migrants, people coming into this country, they are going through an awful lot of pain that these people who slur them and, and write these things have no idea 
of what their life's like and the pain to come over. But I wonder, do we get a bit sensitive about it in that people have to let off steam and they think they're doing it in a comparatively private setting? I mean, soldiers let off steam, journalists let off steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I let off steam. Uh, nurses in A&E say some pretty yeah. grim things at times, but because of it's how they deal with the huge pressures yeah. that they're under. Yeah, but they should then remember that we're living in an age now where we've got these whistleblowers. I mean, mm. when I go out, if before if I, you and I go out and I have a conversation, I'm looking around to see if anybody's recording me. That's the world we're living yes. in now. Yeah. I was set up once uh, by somebody and it was horrendous what they did to me and it went viral. It was awful, but I was set up. But, you know, have a little bit of sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, as you said, before you open your mouth, think. Yeah. think. Yeah. Well, we as journalists have to. The people around this table here, we all have to find our facts out. It's not social media. We can't just put down what we want to say. Oh, no, no, the no. The trouble no. with social media and everybody having a mobile phone that has recording things on them and cameras is that everybody has turned into a publisher, yeah. but they haven't been trained no, to. No, not at all. And, they, and you find this sort of slip up happening all of the time. Yeah. Um, what about the wealthy donors? who have the ear of our Prime Minister. Yes, a classic Big Splash Sunday morning um, story here from the Sunday Times, listing a huge number, I mean, over 12, but uh, the, the, num the numbers of people on the, the supposed to be advisory board is sort of slightly unknown, but at least 12 very, very wealthy in the millions and billions of donors um, who are have, it's alleged now in the Sunday Times that they were being brought in and uh, being briefed by Johnson's aides that they were being brought in as a kind of advisory board with suggestions throughout the pandemic. Some of them wanted um, a different kind of restriction. Some of them wanted changes on taxes. And they included people like um, the wife of Putin's former finance minister who was lobbying for lower taxes. And indeed, uh, to compound the scandal, um, several of these very wealthy donors who were giving millions of pounds were given. So Tony Gallagher, who was two, gave 2.8 million, was given a knighthood. Lord Spencer, who gave 2.4 million, was given a peerage. He had actually four years previously been uh, disallowed or blocked from getting a peerage because of his involvement in a scandal. And so this doesn't, I mean, it's funny, on the front page of the Sunday Times, they've got a separate section that says the Ukraine comes at a good time for Johnson because he wants to get over party gate and all of this. This is a reminder that there are, are, are certainly a lot of people out to get him, but also a certain amount of shadowy stuff going on in government. It's also probably nothing new, isn't it? I mean, I think, don't we all suspect that um, money has changed hands and peerages have been given for all, to all sorts of people in yes, the past. Yes, but I think that in the context particularly of the pandemic, in the context where you had government enacting such extreme and undemocratic measures, you know, in times of emergency, understandable in certain places, but the problem of the Conservative government not having parliamentary scrutiny, introducing legislation at the last minute, this all, you know, alongside having this group of donors who were completely, you know, no one elected them, no one has a say over who they are, being able to influence politics. I think that is a problem. It also shows that Boris Johnson really acts on the last person who talks in his ear, you know, whether it's his uh, wife or a donor or, who, or Cummings or whoever. Yeah. So I think it shows a real lack of conviction on his behalf. I can't see it too. I would love, I'd like to be a dame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be a baroness. All right. Oh dear. Oh, dear. Baroness Diamonds. Diamond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would suit you very well. Uh, June, June Brown. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. I was yeah. talking to her recently and she said she was thrilled at getting, but she'd like to have been a dame. Yeah. Like Barbara. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very much so. Uh, uh, Dame June Brown. Oh, yeah, well, it's you. Uh, just a, a quick look at the Sunday People, Pete and Jimmy Carr. It's a difficult one, this. I'm a stand-up comic. I've been stand-up comic for doing it for 50 years. Where do we draw the line? He's been criticised. Uh, a new storm over a vile comic who was having a go. Victims of children uh, 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 abused, who have been abused, saying that you should laugh about it. Now... In the old days, with the Bernard Mannings, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Ken Goodwins, the John Boardmans, the Pete Prices, the, we would be criticised for whatever we did. Yeah. Now, if you're in the guise of uh, an alternative comic, uh, you're not criticised. He's talking about paedophilia, he talks about things like this. We would have been castigated and never worked on television again, but because it's PC in their eyes, and Jimmy Carr is being um, sort of targeted a lot lately for some of his stuff. Where do we draw the line? It's a bit like, what do we put on WhatsApp? It, I mean, it's comedy. Yeah. 
It's yeah. comedy. I watched. But where did I, comedy I, stop? I watched the, his controversial thing yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. And I, I love Jimmy Carr. It wasn't my cup of tea. It was and not because of the controversial yeah, jokes. Yeah. Thing. I just thought it was a bit rude. Yeah. It's just a bit too rude for me. But it's comedy, and you've you've got to laugh at stuff. I mean, that's the job. And there's it's also the you know I'm the same as you. I've never really liked Jimmy Carr that much, but I do like dark humour. And, you know, there's, you know, it, it, obviously, if you're a, a victim of child abuse, you're not very likely to laugh. It's very but, serious. But thing. you're not likely to go to but, his show either. But though. also, there's yeah. a kind of, there is a cathartic element to laughter, which is that there are, you know, there have been times when people have made jokes about things that happened to me, and there's a kind of catharsis to being able to not laugh at your, you know, belittle what happened yeah. to you, but actually a kind of a relief. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Every, every, that element. every gag could offend somebody. Every, every single, yeah. single yeah. gag could exactly. affect somebody. Yeah. I used to do gag gags when it was wrong to do it but i did that because i was selling my message saying hey accept me this is who i am but then the gay community had a go at me for doing it mm. um so i've had a in, com in comedy it's yeah. as you say every gag could yeah. offend somebody yeah uh, maybe we just need to i think we're too that. easily offended basically yeah. is my my thought on all of this well, uh, we, because we, i was sitting on that side last time and you put me over here so i know upset you. i do not i do not <laughs> we'll swap around next hour don't worry uh Eloil and pete price good to see you we'll catch up with you a little bit later on so let's bring you up to date